start now uh, with the next uh, lecturer, that is uh, Dr. George Bergmeier. He is uh, from Vienna, from Austria at least. And uh, I have heard about his work, uh, and even from his father, yes. And uh, he continued that. And, uh, yeah, one of his subjects is he was using active form, in my opinion, of the fighting in BC and at the age, and um, he had quite success with it. And tomorrow we shall see also speakers, and it's what counts is the activity of the substance, and not the presence, and that's uh, maybe partly true at least for this subject. Dr. George Bergmeier, please start. He was at our meeting uh, more than uh, 10 years ago in Amsterdam, uh, also, but now we bring new information. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Dr. Fogela, for the kind invitation. As you mentioned, you invited me some 10 years ago to the, one of the first conferences to Amsterdam, and when you invited me for the, this year conference, I felt honored and accepted with great pleasure. So I call you welcome to all of you, and for those of you who don't know too much about NEDH, I want to give you an outlook, and I will separate my lectures into three parts. First, what is NADH? Second, what are the biological functions? And third, therapeutic application. Now, NADH is the biological form of hydrogen, and that tells you the story. It reacts with oxygen and makes water and energy, like a rocket fuel. The rocket fuel is hydrogen, and oxygen and puts the rocket into the air. And NADH is the cellular fuel to make energy and water. For the expert, NADH is nicotinamide, other than nuclear hydride. If you can recall that word after my lecture, you don't have any Alzheimer's dementia. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a lot of NADH in the body. <coughs> Do you know how often the heart beats per day? You can calculate very easily. 60 times 60 times 24. 85,000 times our poor heart has to pump every day for 70 years. So the heart has the highest NADH content because the heart needs the highest energy. The second organ which needs a lot of energy is the brain. One third of the energy we do produce in our body is used up by our brain. Only some politicians use much less. <laughs> <at least enough. laughs> now, uh, this is how we produce NADH in our body. We eat nutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and lipids. The laser pointer assistant, where's my correct assistant? How do I get the laser pointer? Right here? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me how to Now. You know, all these nutrients are metabolized in the Krebs cycle, and then NADH is produced in the Krebs cycle. And it, with the help of CoQ10, it makes ATP. And that's how we do produce NADH. We do have NADH in our body, and we can produce NADH by certain things. Now, coming to the five most important biological function, NADH has more than a thousand different metabolic, you know, reaction. But the five most important I want to outline you in the next 10 minutes or so. The fuel for cellular energy production. The second, for me, even as important is, it repairs damaged DNA and damaged cells. It is a very potent antioxidant, and it stimulates dopamine and adrenaline. And dopamine, you may know, is the pleasure hormone. So the more dopamine we have, the better we feel, and you can get more dopamine by taking NADH. And the newest result, uh, it stimulates nitric oxide production. Now let's start with NADH as fuel for the cell energy production. The question is, can we increase the energy production of the cell? The answer is yes, with NAD, by NADH. But now you will ask, show me the evidence. You know, fairy tales are something for kids, for children, you know, like 
Red Bull gives you wings, and if you drink that and you jump out of the window, you are missing the wings. Now, <laughs> if you read the biochemistry textbook, it will say any DH does not enter the cell. You know, lineage or name. That was the dogma. And I keep telling my students, don't rely on dogmas. The probability of dogmas to be wrong is very, very high. I can recall when the Nobel laureate Francis Crick at the conference said, there is only one way from DNA to RNA to protein. A year later, they we discovered the reverse transcriptase. Now, what we did at the University of Prague, we took our heart cells in tissue culture and we incubated them with NADH. And what happened? According to biochemistry, nothing should happen. But what happened? We found 30% more ATP in these heart cells. So we can increase ATP concentration in heart cells. And the consequences is, well, we have published that in the British Journal of Pharmacology by two independent techniques. We can measure ATP increase in one single cell. And what is even more important, the heart cells live longer. If you see the line here, so after six hours, all the heart cells are dead. But with any age, 50% are still alive. You know, and I will, I will even ask them later on what that happens. Based on this result, we got a patent on prolonging the lifespan of cell, tissue, organs, and individuals by NADH, NADPH, and ADP rivals. Now we can use this heart cell system to measure other substances.